Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create the covered bridge artwork. The artwork is based on a rubber stamp. So this video shows you how you can convert that type of image into art. Plus, I will show you how contrast improves the visual appeal of your artwork. Well, let's get started. Using rubber stamps. I started out with a standard wood mount rubber stamp. Keep in mind, any stamp will work. After inking the stamp, I pressed it onto the paper. Notice the missing area on the impression. There isn't a way to fix this. If I had stamped directly on the wood, I'd have a problem. Plus, there is a risk of the ink bleeding or seeping along the wood grain, which can be very noticeable. Instead, I always stamp on the paper first. Once I have a good impression, I let the ink dry for a couple of minutes. Then I flip the paper over and coat the back side of it with a graphite pencil. Now it is ready for tracing onto whatever surface you'll be burning on. Pyography time. Use a writer pen tip and burn over the trace lines. I am using a micro writer, but any writer pen tip will work. Keep the color in the tan range. Notice how I made the edges of the trees very jagged. The edges should not be straight lines. If you like, you can draw in lots of curving lines along the edges of the trees. Anything to give the outer edges a bit of variety is a good thing. Once you're done burning in the trace lines, rub a standard pencil eraser over the board to remove any residual graphite. Here's how my board looked after I erase the residual graphite. Then use a shader pen tip and burn the opening or inside of the bridge to a dark brown or black color. It would be easier to use a writer pen tip on the side of the bridge. The small tip on the writer allows you to avoid the flower petals with greater ease than the shader does. For the most part, I am using uniform strokes as my burn method, but I also use some circular motion. If you are unfamiliar with my terminology, I have a video that explains them. I will put a link to that video in the description below. To keep your edges crisp and clean, either position your hand or rotate the board so your pen tip stays in optimal position. Optimal position means that the front edge of the shader is along the edge of the shape you are burning in. The back portion of the shader is angled so it is over the area being burned in. Switch to a writer pen tip and burn in the support beams on the bridge. I'm sure that some of them are supposed to be tree trunks. Speaking of trees, burn in the visible branches on the trees. Burn them to a dark brown or black color. Use the edge of a shader and burn a medium tan line just under the roof on the bridge. Then burn medium to dark tan pull away strokes along that line. Start the stroke on the line and pull it down towards the ground. Stop the stroke when you reach the line indicating the end of the cast shadows. With my rendition of this scene, I visualize the sun being positioned up and to the left of the bridge. This means that the light is striking the left side of the bridge and the right side is in shadows. So burn the cast shadow on the right side a couple of shades darker than the front of the bridge. Use circular motion to burn in the foliage on the tallest tree. 
Keep the circular motion tight. By this I mean make small circles. Vary the color of the circles. The little variations will give the impression of small clusters of leaves and shadows on the leaves. Also, keep in mind where your light source is. My light source is on the left, so that side of the tree will be lighter in color than the right side. Don't worry if you burn past the lines along the edge of the tree. We don't want any hard or crisp lines because this is a tree in the distance. There shouldn't be a lot of detail on the tree. Also, keep the color in the tans and light brown range. I added this bit of foliage to the tree just to help the corner of the roof stand out. With the adjacent tree, I chose to make it a type of evergreen. I am burning thick, single lines. As I get further down the tree, I angle the lines outward towards the edge of the tree, similar to burning in a bunch of V shapes. This tree is considerably darker than the first one for contrast. I wanted to be able to easily tell the trees apart and I accomplished this by changing the color and texture of the trees. Fill the shrub with curving rows of lines or zigzags. Each row gets smaller and a little darker as you near the center of the shrub. Make sure your lines have tonal variations on them. Also, fill in the gap between the fence railing and the fence post. Burn in this tree the same way we did the tallest one, using tightly burned circular motion. I am pressing the pin tip to the shape of the birds to darken them up. A writer pin tip would be easier, but I didn't feel like switching the pin tip out. Burn the tree a bit darker next to the roof line, and make sure to incorporate tonal variety into your burn marks. With the adjacent tree, it too gets burned in like the tallest tree. So use circular motion and make sure to incorporate tonal variety. I chose to darken up the tree where it touches the one to the left. I did this to make it stand out more. This is not absolutely necessary, as distant trees are hard to tell apart. With this last tree, burn it in like the shrub. So burn in concentric rows of lines along the contours. If it is easier, switch to a writer pen tip when working next to the flowers. The last thing I decided to do was add a touch of color through the bridge window. I used circular motion for this and kept the color in the tan range. Then I did the same thing along the tree branches and trunks next to the bridge. If needed, clean up the lower edge of the cast shadow on the front of the bridge. Afterwards, burn vertical lines down the side of the bridge. Don't worry about making them perfectly straight. This is a rustic bridge, so imperfections are perfectly acceptable. Once the lines are done, then burn in the side of the bridge to a tan color. I mostly used uniform strokes as my burn method, but I also used some circular motion. I am using my smallest shader, as my work area is not very big. I would recommend enlarging the image so that it's easier to work on. Now burn in the front of the bridge. Make sure that it is a couple of shades lighter than the side. If the front gets too dark, then reburn over the side so that it is darker than the front. I will admit that there is not enough contrast between the front and side of the bridge on my artwork. Afterwards, add the vertical lines to the front using the razor edge of the shader. Or, if it's easier, use a writer pen tip or a knife or skew pen tip. 
use the razor edge of the shader to burn a dark, thin line along the edges of the roof. Rotate the board as needed to make this easy. Burning thin, straight lines are a perfect job for skew or knife pen tips, but I was too lazy to switch my pen tip out for one. If needed, increase the contrast between the distant trees and the roof. Burn a dark dot for the bird's eye. Then, burn in the flower centers. Burn them to a dark tan or light brown color. Burn the butterfly body to a dark brown or black color. Now burn in the flower stems and leaves. Burn them so that they are similar in color to the flower centers. If you want to get fancy, you can burn each one so that the base is darker than the top, but they can also be uniform in color. This area is so small, it really doesn't matter. Burn in the ground around the flowers to a tan color. Also, burn a dark tan or light brown line under the edge of the bridge. With the ground, I first used a vertical zigzag or up-down burn stroke to fill in the area. Then I re-burned over it using a horizontal zigzag or a left-right burn stroke. I did not try to make the color uniform. With the ground in front of the bridge, I burned horizontal zigzags and single lines. Also, I left gaps between the lines and zigzags. Burn the flower center and the stem. Then, burn the greenery to the left of the flower. Afterwards, re-burn over the left side of the ground to make it a little darker. This will give the impression that the ground in that area is in the shadows. Lightly burn over the fence and add a few dark tan lines to give it a rustic look. Burn the legs and tail of the bird to a medium brown color. The tail does not need to be uniform in color. Next, burn around the wing and fill it with a tan color. Again, it doesn't need to be uniform in color. Then burn in the back so that it matches the color of the tail feathers. With the head and the beak, burn them a few shades lighter than the back. I left a white patch in the center of the face, but it is your choice if you want to do the same. Burn in the greenery next to the stump or rock that the bird is perched on. With the greenery, burn it to a light to medium brown color. Also, burn a dark line along the edge of the stump. Burn any remaining flower centers, then add one dot on each wing of the butterfly. Burn a line down the center of each frond. Then, Darken up the inner edge of each leaf on the fronds. Now let's add some bark texture to the side of the stump. I am tapping the pen tip to the board to get short, mostly vertical lines along the side. Then add a crack by burning longer and darker lines in one area. With the top of the stump, Burn short tan lines for texture. Again, I am just tapping the pen tip to the wood for this. Burn along the inner edge of each flower petal on the white daisies. Start the stroke on or near the flower center and pull the pen tip towards the outer edge of the petal. Stop near the halfway mark. I am using my smallest shader pen tip for this, but depending on the size of the image you are burning on, a writer pen tip might be easier to use. Use the flat of the shader and burn the roof to a tan color. Then use the razor edge of the shader and burn parallel lines diagonally over the roof. 
Next, use the opposite side of the razor edge of the shader and burn diagonal parallel lines in this new direction. Now darken up the fascia boards on the roof. I used a combination of pull away and uniform strokes for this. If needed, darken up the seam where the roof touches the wall. Burn a dark line under the stump. Then create a side to the stump on the back of it. Afterwards, darken up the ground that is nearby the stump. Reburn over the side of the stump to darken it up. If needed, add more texture to the top of the stump. If needed, add some dark lines to the side of the stump for texture and to help it stand out from the ground and flowers. Importance of Contrast I created two versions of the Covered Bridge artwork. The first one, which you are watching now, was done with low contrast. I tried to keep all of the burns in the tan range, with just a few venturing into the light brown range. Even though this version has the same details as the tutorial version, it is lacking in visual interest. Compare the two versions side by side. The high contrast version on the right immediately grabs the eye and keeps it engaged longer than the low contrast on the left. Hopefully this shows you why you should include a lot of contrast in your artwork. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you found the information useful. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of the tutorial along with a free pattern that you can download. Well, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you next week.